coaching, I would say it provides a lot of support. You get selected as a freshman and you stay for three years at SCU. I think a list of eligible students will be emailed uh, during like winter quarter of their freshman year. And I think the cutoff is basically just a 3.5 GPA or higher. And then from there, you send in an application and then there's a round of interviews. And then from there, 25 first year business students get selected. And for this organization, I would say the real value add honestly is just like the network that you get, like Fern is on the call with me. It's just like having a group of people around you that you can talk to and turn to during the whole college experience. But also I definitely think the mentors, Brenda and Jack are really amazing. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've been in like situations where I just didn't know what to do. Or I didn't know how to navigate it. And I would like email Brenda. I'd be like, help me please. And she would actually like reach out and be just like, okay, calm down. It's okay. You got this. And I think um, it's, they're, they're basically just adults that are like in your corner at SCU. And I think that's really important, especially for, you know, people of color here at SCU. Like it's a really great resource to have. What I struggled with sometimes was learning how to uh, raise my voice or speak my opinion or ask for something that I wanted. And actually the mentors, Brenda and Jack were really, really helpful with that. So I think it's just a really great resource for everybody to be a part of. And yeah, anything to add, Fern? Yeah, I can add a bit as well. So I'm Fernanda, um, I am a senior finance major um, in the same ACE cohort as Kristen. Um, and yeah, she explained it super well. I think for me, um, I can voice the fact that ACE is a, is a program that has really helped me in terms of growing my confidence as a woman in the business world, um, particularly a woman in finance. Um, it takes a lot of confidence to walk into a room sometimes when you're um, one of few women or few, for me, like Latin American people um, in the room. So it's been really great to get to grow um, both, you know, personally, but also grow with a group of people through the past three years. Um, when I started in the ACE program, I definitely didn't know my cohort very well at all. I was definitely a bit intimidated by them because you get 25 of some of the most hardworking people you'll meet in the business school all together in one room. And at first it can be a bit intimidating, but you learn that those are the people who are going to be um, your biggest supporters. They're going to be in your corner. It's really nice when you walk into a class and you have group projects um, and you have immediate faces that you know are in the ACE program who are, you know, hardworking students who are going to get their work done and get it done well. Um, I know for more, I guess, tangible experiences in the ACE program, there's a lot of professional development that goes on, particularly through sophomore year. There's a lot of meetings, um, I guess, um, every, every other week or a couple of times a month where you'll go. Um, and work on things like interview prep, working on resumes, um, networking experiences, and, and all those things. They used to do company tours as well before COVID, so hopefully that'll be coming back soon. Um, so I think there's a lot of motivation in working hard your first year in the business school in order to, you know, be able to apply for this program. Um, it's through, like, specifically through the Levy School of Business, so there's a lot um, of networking that you can get out of it. And for me personally, for example, through the ACE program, I was able to apply um, more directly for an internship at Apple, which is where I worked this past summer in finance, and I'll be returning there full time once I graduate. So I got a lot out of the ACE program personally. Um, so I always speak highly of it. And I know at the end, we have time for questions. So feel free to ask anything um, that comes to mind. But I think that wraps up the ACE program. Uh, hi, I'm Renee, and uh, I'm a junior MIS and econ double major, and today I'm representing the Levy School of Business's uh, Community Fellowship Program. So it's sort of just a way for student, for business students to get placed at different uh, nonprofits or government organizations as a way to get better acquainted with the wider San Jose, Santa Clara community. So uh, you pay, you're placed in a year-long paid position and then you gain experience with social justice issues and then experience like communities that are like typically underserved and also go to a, a, a bi-weekly seminar where you learn about like food insecurity, poverty, those kinds of issues. I'm currently working as the public policy intern at the Silicon Valley Council of Nonprofits. And I think one of the biggest benefits to being in the program 
is getting that hands-on experience working at a nonprofit, which isn't typically pushed on business students. It's usually like go straight into the private sector, but this way it's definitely a way for you to contribute to serving maybe more marginalized communities and get to know some of those issues and get experience uh, helping out with those communities. Yeah, and we'll do the community portion later, but um, that's the basis of it. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Alexis Takagi. I'm a senior studying communication. Um, I'm continuing my studies next year at SCU, pursuing a doctorate in education and social justice leadership. And I'm here representing the REAL program, um, which aims to provide a paid research internship project or creative work opportunities for all undergraduate students. So it's really up to you to pursue um, what project you want. Um, and experiences funded through the REAL program last up to 10 weeks during the summer. Um, they also have an option where you can do work through the academic quarter. And the REAL program really lets students like do what they love and are passionate about. Um, other internship opportunities can sometimes be limiting to specific majors or to specific careers. And I think when you're especially trying to gain, you know, first your first work experience and things like that and be exposed to different career opportunities, it can be really valuable. And so the REAL program allowed me to get funding for my research, um, which made me really confident in my abilities to, you know, execute a research project from idea to like publication. And so I totally recommend the REAL program. If you want to make an art piece, do an art installation. If you want to intern at a nonprofit that may be under-resourced and can't fund you, the REAL program will be able to connect you with funding and with mentors that can really help you um, strengthen your vocation. And yeah, and it's really structured too. So if you have want support and anything like that, like you can do that as well, um, while also having agency to do your own project. So if you have any questions, um, you can reach out. Hi, everyone. My name is Natalie Henriquez, and I'm here to represent the Center of Arts and Humanities today. I am a senior, and I'm also a transfer student. I transferred to Santa Clara in fall 2020. And I'm a history and philosophy dual major. I, at the Center of Arts and Humanities, I'm a student fellow, and there is about, I think, five other fellows amongst us. My project will be focusing on artificial intelligence and using Mary Shelley's Frankenstein to analyze the ethics of what does it mean to create a monster in technology and how can we go about mitigating those potentials for error. I'm really interested in the intersections of technology and race, focusing on how technology could work to reinforce and simultaneously mirror pre-existing prejudice and systemic racism. So my project will really be looking at that element of monstrosity as well. And the Center of Arts and Humanities has been of incredible support to me all year long. I also have one of my mentors as the professor fellow as well. And it's been really wonderful to just have our weekly meetings, checking in about our research, being able to rely on each other to bounce off ideas, edits, anything along the way. The Center of Arts and Humanities has been really supportive. And I would urge everyone to apply. And actually, their applications are due in about a week. So I've really enjoyed all of my experiences at the Center of Arts and Humanities. And yeah, if anyone has any questions, please let me know. I can add some more detail as well. Um, with the Center of Arts and Humanities, I submitted an application last year for my research. I had started with this project actually at my previous school. I'd been really interested in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and trying to see how it could be ethically salient today. There's a lot of different facets of technology that I was interested in. And I had the pleasure of taking a philosophy class, which with one of my professors who is actually one of my mentors for this as well, allowed me to investigate a lot of different fields and educated me on some issues of technology that I wasn't exposed to as a history and philosophy major. And I think with the Center of Arts and Humanities, also having students with a bunch of other projects and having that emphasis on just interdisciplinary approach has allowed me to really challenge myself with different ideas and also hear from a lot of different people who have expertise in different fields. So just add a little bit more detail, but if anyone has any more questions, please let me know. 
I can speak a bit more as to things I've been able to do through the ACE program um, in terms of, I think a lot of what the ACE program has to offer um, is offered to, you know, to everyone in the cohort, but there's always opportunities to do more with the program. Um, that's something I was super interested in um, as one of my kind of cornerstone interests throughout college has been mentorship. Um, and so me and one of my um, other peers in the ACE cohort um, were able to help teach a few classes throughout our college experience that were related to business leadership skills. Um, and we taught them with one of our mentors in the ACE program. It was a really fulfilling way to, you know, get to know more of the younger students as I became a junior and a senior at Santa Clara. And it was really great because as much as I was, you know, being a leader and a mentor to them, um, they were also teaching me a ton. So I definitely highlight um, the classes that we were teaching were Business 71 and Business 72. So if you ever are interested in taking a you know, a, it's a two unit class um, for each of them. Um, nothing heavy on the schedule. And honestly, just a really great experience to continue to, you know, build your leadership skills, whether you're in the ACE program or not, you can take that class um, or those two classes. And they're really great. Taught by Jack Caffey. He's an amazing professor and human. Um, spent a lot of his career at HP doing some really great things. Um, so highly speak of him. Um, and then also just in terms of other things you can do within the ACE program is just really um, get to know people in various cohorts. So we have the ability to um, have kind of like a big little buddy situation every year. So if you want, once you're a sophomore, I think, or a junior, um, you can sign up to have kind of like a little buddy who's a freshman in the ACE program. And it's a really awesome way um, to, you know, work on leadership and mentorship skills. I think as you can see, like the ACE program is really all about that kind of development throughout college and growing in confidence. Um, so I found a lot of value in being able to, you know, have a mentor when I was a first year and a sophomore and then be a mentor as a junior and a senior. And those students that I mentor are some of the people who I actually call really good friends of mine now. So it's a really great way to, you know, um, get a lot out of the program if you, um, you know, choose to be involved. Uh, Vern basically just described everything per perfectly. Um, I would add on to that pretty much, I would say the program is really definitely focused on your own development, both personally and professionally. I think the network that you get is just, it, it's really reassuring to know that, like Fern mentioned earlier, that when you like come and walk into a room, it's really nice to have that feeling of rapport. It's really nice to have that feeling of familiarity that you see somebody that you know. And I think that mentorship mentorship is also really important because you kind of just are able to give back what you've gotten out of the ACE program. In terms of like what we've done, a lot of it is a lot, a lot, like Fern said, a lot of it is mentoring for us. And it's really about how you as an individual can grow and then how you can give back after all of that. Uh, for the community fellows program, I think one of the best parts is that you can really, they really catered it for each position to what uh, business students would be interested in doing in the future. So my position, I was really interested in public policy initially. So then that's why I kind of aimed for that placement. But I know other fellows have been doing marketing roles, or even like where there's a certain placement where you like work with students in like a high school. And then one who's working on food insecurity at a nonprofit called VeggieLution. So it really, um, it really depends on what you're interested in and what you want to aim for. But in my role specifically, we do advocacy for the nonprofit legislation. And that's something I'm really interested in, um, especially concerning like law or legal stuff is what I'm, uh, what I'm passionate about. But then if you, you were more interested in like marketing or helping out with nonprofits in that way, I think that's the best way for, for fellows to utilize their talents in different ways because they're sort of helping. E either way, you're definitely helping a really um, good cause and we're, uh, a worthy organization, but just with whatever you can do. Um, I worked with a research initiative called the Academic Worries Project at the University of San Francisco and the real program was able to fund me over the summer for that. Um, and the study was timely and examined the impact of the pandemic on college students' goals um, and academic employment and social. 
Um, and it was a mixed method study at a local community college. Um, the study found that students like reported like high levels of feeling starved for company, high levels of dissatisfaction, and high levels of uncertainty regarding academic performance. Um, and so I was able to help the research team with data collection, analysis, and presenting the findings to key stakeholders at the college that we conducted the study. Um, and we were able to find support for the student body at the institution where the study was being conducted. Um, and I'm actually presenting the findings at an upcoming conference. Um, so it's still kind of like with me. So it's really a life, not lifelong, but it's making me um, a learner in a long, a long term um, way because I'm able to apply from literally like idea, um, developing the idea to publication. So, um, and yeah. And without the real program, I would not have been able to like pursue this um, experience or um, be able to like, it helped me confirm my passion for research. Um, so, yeah. Um, in terms of the fellows program, so they start uh, doing like information nights and uh, applications in the spring, and then they'll have an initial interview with the um, basic, basically the supervisors uh, of the program itself, and then they'll pass you on to whatever placements they think you would be best suited for, and then that you would have individual um, interviews with those with those placements. And then that's sort of the way you can uh, prioritize like, oh, I'd prefer to go into this one, but it, eventually they will uh, have you go into one program or the other. Um, and then they you end up doing the, so this is for juniors and seniors, you'll do a year long internship, which also, um, which is also counts as your ELSJ. So that's really nice to have that, um, to have that requirement done as well. I can speak for the ACE program, just to reiterate what Kristen said earlier, the way the ACE program recruiting works is um, basically it's like academic, um, like accomplishment based in terms of who can apply, you have to have a 3.5 GPA minimum, um, and you get an email your first year around winter time that invites you to apply. Um, so like the Levy School of Business keeps tabs on everyone's grades. Um, so you kind of get the invite sent to you then you can fill out an application, which involves some more kind of behavioral questions related to um, who you are, what your experiences are, what are your strengths, et cetera. Um, and then based on all of the people who apply, then a certain amount of people get chosen for interviews. Um, and then those interviews are kind of panel interviews. So you're interviewed by older ACE students actually. So it'll be like two to three um, juniors and seniors in the ACE program interviewing um, one first year at a time. Um, and those have previously been in person. Um, like, I mean, when Kristen and I applied our freshman year, those interviews were in person in Lucas Hall, um, but they've been online the past few years. So unsure of what that will look like this year and next year, um, but that's how you apply. And then again, 25 students get chosen every year. Um, and it's a program where you can only enter as a first year. Um, so it's good to, you know, be aware of it early, which is exactly what you guys are doing. I just put um, the real application um, in the chat. Um, it is based on major for the most part. So like if you're psychology, you would go through the there's a thing that says psychology, you would click on that and then it would take you to that. And um, one of the reasons why they can do that is to make sure each major gets enough funding allocated um, to that. There's also undeclared. So if you are undeclared, there's a, they have a separate pot of funding for that. Um, in regards to the question, there should be, there should be eligible for engineering students. Um, they also have like internships like listed on the spreadsheet that I'm gonna put in the chat too. So they have they collect scholarships, fellowships, and other um, opportunities for students to get involved also on the website. So if you don't know what you want to do, they have a great spreadsheet that's just like really a comprehensive list of different local um, projects that you could be a part of and get funding for. 
Um, so there should be engineering in there as well. Um, and then I will also put the email in the chat as well for any other like specific um, application questions as well. Um, the application is pretty straightforward. Um, some tips that I have would probably to be um, be specific in describing the project that you want to pursue. Um, for example, describe what type of study you want to do, the general time frame, the goals, um, things like that, and like what you want to get out of the experience. Um, you know, things can change, but be specific as possible so the real program can help best support you and also get you the most funding for your project. I can start on the next question um, on how the ACE program has challenged me. I think I definitely came into college not having a huge, um, you know, idea of what professional development looked like in terms of, you know, being a business student. I didn't really know exactly what I was getting myself into, but I knew I had an interest in, um, for example, the tech industry. Um, but I didn't really know what it would take to kind of transform from the student that I knew I was confident in being into being a professional that I, you know, could carry myself in the way business professionals do. And I could, you know, have conversations and network um, and present information. So I think the ACE program really challenged me to grow in my confidence. Um, and it's something I've really been able to do successfully based on how much support I was given through the program. Um, as Kristen talked about earlier, Brenda and Jack, who run the program, um, are insanely supportive and some of my biggest mentors that I've had throughout college. I've worked for them. I've TA'd for them. I've done so many things with them that I wouldn't have done had it not been for the ACE program. And I think I really looked into um, forming those mentorship relationships and keeping them throughout college, which is something that really helped me in terms of, you know, having someone to support me when I got um, really stressed with too much on my plate, or if I needed advice about something, or I needed to practice interview questions or anything like that. Um, I had the ability to go to them and go to my peers as well. Um, I think it also challenged me in the sense that it's really nice to have a group of students who you know are just as hardworking as you are um, around you because they not only you know challenge you to be better every single day but they also you know bring you up and help you positively instead of kind of being competitive in any sort of negative way so it's it really kind of challenged me to change my thinking about what it means to you know have all of these um, really accomplished and talented peers so um, I have nothing but good things to say about the ACE program and how it's helped me develop throughout the years. Oh, go ahead. Um, something I forgot to mention about the real program is that you do need to create like a deliverable to get your um, final amount of funding. So you get your first batch of funding in the beginning. And then for your final batch, you submit a deliverable, which could be like a poster, your art project, um, or like an essay or something like that to just show the, like what you've learned and what you have been working on. Um, so you want to keep that in mind as well when you're also thinking about what you want to do. Um, you can also work on these deliverables with your mentors, with a team. Um, so it's not just, it can be a product of your internship and of your experience. I think for my uh, fellowship right now and also just through the um, fellowship seminar, one of the biggest things I've been challenged by is just my own lack of information. I think being confronted with challenges such as like, poverty in Silicon Valley, which is supposed to be one of the like, you know, richest places uh, in, in the United States, is just something that I didn't know as much about and maybe I should have, but then being taught that and being taught about those sort of issues that I would not have uh, thought about before, uh, I, especially like um, in my role right now, we're talking about like displacement in San Jose and just all these issues locally, as well as, you know, statewide you there are certain things you like you see on the news but definitely being able being more involved locally with those kinds of issues such as like homelessness and housing has definitely challenged me to be more involved and uh you know kind of fit not uh to just to learn more about the issues that are in our own backyard
I see a question related to the ACE program that says, what do networking events look like through the ACE program and how do you feel they benefited you? Um, so it's looked kind of different throughout my years at Santa Clara. So um, prior to COVID, which is hopefully what things will look like um, going forward, um, we had a lot of alumni come and speak on panels um, or host company tours. One really nice thing about the ACE program is everyone you know, because you're in it for your entire college experience. When people are alumni, they're really likely to help you out and talk to you um, whenever you need it. Um, because, you know, there's kind of an ACE bond. Um, there's a LinkedIn group that has, you know, all of the members of the ACE co different cohorts throughout the years. It's been going for at least 15 years or more. Um, and so um, what it's looked like in the past year or two is there's different, you know, Zoom panel events um, and you have the opportunity to, you know, get everyone's contact information. And they're usually coming from some really cool companies. Um, I know Apple is a big one, just that I've experienced. Um, when I like personally worked at the company this past summer in finance, um, I met so many different people who had been in the ACE program and even had, um, like when I was interviewing for my internship, um, I was able to get in touch with someone who was an ACE alumni um, who, you know, helped me prepare for my interviews super kindly. I didn't know her super well. I just kind of knew her as like, she knew my friend who was also in the ACE program and she connected us. Um, and it was really valuable to know that, you know, once you have that ACE kind of designation to your name, people trust that you're going to be someone who's really, you know, focused and interested in growing and really pursuing um, the awesome opportunities that Silicon Valley has to offer. Um, so that's kind of what it's looked like in my experience. Um, but if you have any other specific questions related to it, please let me know. Um, I would recommend for Colin's question, um, which program should I choose if, to do research? Um, if you're kind of open-minded on what you want to do, I would recommend the real program just because you get to pick like what you want to study. Like you could have total control kind of over your study um, and then gain mentorship with like a professor that you really trust or that you like find you know, you're interested in their research in. Um, there's also the Hackworth grant. Um, and I'll put that in the chat, but that's for like applied ethics. So if your study has to do with like STEM and like ethics, you could also get funding through that. Um, so it just kind of depends on like how much independence you want. Um, if you want to join a research team and things like that, you can do that and still get funding through the real program, or you could do an independent study on your own and be funded through real or through the Hackworth um, grant. But I would recommend those two for funding just because I've had really positive experiences with both and I've heard students have also positive experiences. Yeah, I can speak a little bit. Um, I was a Hackworth fellow my junior year, really awesome program. So I'm a business major and my project was related, you know, to business, but a lot of the students that I, um, you know, had as peers in that program were working on things related to a multitude of topics from environmental science to AI, ethics, different e economic topics and science topics as well. Um, so the Hackworth Fellowship is really awesome because if you think about it, ethics is really tied into anything um, that you could talk about. So it's a really great vehicle to go through because it gives you not only the opportunity to do that potential you know, STEM research, but it gives you also another perspective to look at when it comes to the ethics side of things. So that was a really good one to bring up, Alexis.
Okay, so if our attendees don't have any other questions, um, can you all send in, you know, I, I did send in the links for each program, but if you all have, you know, a specific contact just to make it easier um, for our attendees to contact um, the directors of these programs, can you go ahead and send them in? I know, Alexis, you've already sent in a few. Um, uh, just so if you have any questions, you know, after this presentation, you can go ahead, feel free and contact them with all, any questions you have. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and give it a few, like one minute for you guys to go ahead and save those um, that contact info. And we're going to go ahead and close it up. Um, thank you all so much for attending the session. I hope that it was helpful. Thank you all to my student panel. Thank you for, you know, giving your time and giving us information about your experiences and about, um, you know, these uh, programs and centers in general. Um, do you have, actually, I have one more question. So do you have any advice for our um, newly admitted students. I can start us off. Um, I think two pieces of advice. The first one, um, just have confidence in yourself. I think it took me a lot of college to understand that there's a lot of reasons to be proud of yourself, both where you're at and where you're going. Um, so don't be afraid to, you know, take opportunities to get involved in programs like the ones that we're talking about, because you're far more likely to succeed and find um, a lot of growth in them than you might think, because you're really supported at Santa Clara by all of the faculty and staff and your peers as well. I highly recommend like talking to professors and also just like reaching out to like any of the programs like people are so nice and are willing to help you and get you in the right direction um, to help you find like I was looking for funding for my research project and I didn't know about the Hackworth grant so just ask questions um, professors are more than willing to help you find connections and to help you find opportunities that are that suit you and your passions and your needs so highly recommend just like reaching out to people. We're a very welcoming community and yeah. Yeah, I'd echo that uh, just reach out for any opportunities that you want. There's no harm in asking for anything or applying for anything. It's one of the great things about uh, being at SU is there's so many opportunities to reach out for. And I think you'll definitely find whatever is like best fit for you eventually. Yeah, that's awesome advice. I don't know, Fernanda, if you said something about asking questions, um, but I, I guess I, I can give you guys some advice too. I'm an SU alumni and I'm uh, currently an admission counselor. Um, so one word of advice is ask questions, you know, to whoever. Uh, I do firmly believe that the quality of your life depends on the type of questions you ask. So um, don't feel free, uh, don't feel, you know, scared to ask people questions for help, you know, ask for help. Um, there are so many people that are willing to help you here at Santa Clara. I mean, we're all here for our students. Um, so don't even, you know, to your peers, uh, don't feel uh, afraid to ask because, you know, the worst answer you can get is a no. So just always ask. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this session. We are finishing up a little early, but a few of our members did have to leave um, due to other, you know, um, responsibilities and commitments. Um, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to send them over to either me and I'll go ahead and send um, my email or to any of our attendee, any of our student um, students in our student panel, and they already sent the info through the chat. So thank you all so much for coming and have a, you know, a rest, a, a good day <laughs> and enjoy the rest of Unity. Thank you, take care.